It's all right. I'll be here in a minute. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here it is. Good morning. Oh, he has a frog. Ah, oh, that's okay. Everybody knows who I am, don't you? Yeah. Hmm. Could you tell us, Could just tell so us everyone us knows? Oh, well, I'm Grindel. I'm your friendly Zespod reptilian. So, therefore, hello. Hello, nice to meet you, Grindel. And nice to meet you, too. I thought most people knew who I was, but maybe not everybody. I just wanted to stop by and say hello. I haven't been here for a while. Well, you haven't. You haven't seen me for a long time. Do you have no, any messages? I... Do you have any messages for our group this morning? Just that I keep moving forward. I know that a lot of you are going through some really hard times right now. It is a time when the Earth's, uh, you know, energies are really disrupted so if you're feeling a negative feeling then you feel it stronger if you're feeling a positive feeling then you feel that stronger however most of you have been going through some third dimensional agonies lately and I just want to say that that will end very shortly the uh, the powers have been moving down the energies have been evening out a little more there's a few spots that are still pretty energetic, but most places are getting better. So, if you have any questions for me. Well, that's great news with the energy. I know we've all been looking for answers there. Yeah. Uh, does anyone have a question this morning? Ah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I have a question. Okay. Yeah. Dan, how are you? Good morning, Grendel. Uh, much has been going on. Thanks for uh, visiting the other day. Will you be around uh, around more here uh, the next yeah, little while? Yeah, I'm going to be around a little more. I was sort of busy for a while. Yeah, is that all sorted out? Yeah, it's all sorted out now pretty much. Otherwise, I'd still not be here. Okay, so you'll be available for the next few weeks, or do you have a time frame? Yeah, who knows? I could be here for three minutes or three days or three weeks. It doesn't. You never know. Okay. Well, I have a feeling uh, people will be asking for you. So if you have an opportunity to leave your energy around, please do that. Yeah. They've. I've already talked to a couple people this week. Yes. So that's. Yeah, we saw one of them just the other day. So that was awesome. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to say hey. Oh, no, I just wanted to say hey and uh, let everybody know that you're around a little bit and they can direct your questions to you as it becomes available to them. All right. Really if any, good. If anybody okay. else has a question. How about anybody in the room there with you, Grendel? Can we ask? Yeah. Any of them? No, nobody has a question. I guess I'm not loved. Oh, we love you so much. <laughs> we appreciate you coming and bringing your energy in the room today. It's wonderful. I, I'll make way for someone else because oh, I know... Will has a question, if you don't mind sticking around for just a minute. No, I'm all right. Okay, Will. Good morning, Grindel. How are you? Good morning, Will. I'm fine. I was wondering if you could give us a rendition, a short, a short little story, just coming from you, help brighten our day. A story? What do you want it to be about? I don't know. Jim and I were talking about having uh, Grindel's story time of uh, Grindel reading children's books. Oh uh, yeah, I remember you talking about that. Yeah, uh, it would it would go something like. Once upon a time, and you realize there's no such thing as time, there was a young girl. Well, she wasn't so young. She was sort of middle-aged. But she was on her way to her grandmother's house because probably she passed or something. 
But it was a good it was a good day for her because she had a basket full of goodies. Everybody was gonna enjoy that, yeah. So, but I, that's just an example of how one of our fairy tales would start. But, <laughs> that's very funny. Well, we do have another question, if you don't mind. Oh, very good. This is from Sure. Yes. And the question is, Grindel, from what I know, there's something new that we should be speaking about. Just wondering, what are the chances for this to happen? I'm not sure. Oh, yes. We would be speaking about that in private for sure. But there are other things to speak about in the world arena. I think that's what he's talking about. There are, the meeting is coming up with the politicians on the 22nd or the 24th. And many of you, some of you, not many of you, but some of you will be going to this meeting because you have something to say to the politicians about first contact or about alien arrivals and things of that nature or site to site. And so prepare yourselves. Some of you don't even know that you're going to be speaking, but others of you do. So hopefully you will remember it because it will be a memorable time. Now, there are certain governments and things of this nature that are in very dire states. They may not be present as they're dealing with their economy or rumors of war or things of this nature. We hope that they will attend. However, there is a lot of very uh, dangerous things going on right now. So some countries are close to financial disaster, and that is not a good thing. So they may not attend because they feel that they have other interests that are greater. Now, Sheer, what is the subject that you think that I should bring up at this point? Somehow I don't think that was it. The rest of his follow-up was how strong it will be. So I'm uh, thinking maybe energies? I'm not sure. How strong it will be? Interesting. I don't know if I know what he's talking about. I might know, but and right now it's not. It's bouncing off the old brain cavity. I can't figure out what he's talking about, but that's all right. What needs to be said will be said. So that is all that's important. Okay. And Amy, would you like to say something? Yes. Um, I, I just wanted to take the opportunity to introduce myself. Grendel, we've never met before. But hello, my name Amy. Is Amy, and I just wanted to say hello, and it was it's nice meeting you. It's nice meeting you as well. Do you have any questions? Um, just personal questions. That's probably not. I see. Understood. But it was very nice meeting you. It's a nice group today. Yes, it's nice meeting you too. I heard a lot about you, so I wanted to say hello. <laughs> and blessings. Blessings to you as well. Thank you realize you. now that there are other other of my kind that are going to start to channel because they see that it's a lot of fun for one thing. And they see that they can bring in their messages for another thing. So it is a, a very big possibility that you'll be seeing it more Zespot reptilians channeling through humans. Okay. Continue. Yes. Shearer wanted to add. Um, it's, he says, uh, you will know what he was talking about and something you're working on. Oh. I think I understand. Yes, but that's not to be discussed with everybody. Um, there are some things that are going on with the governments from a simply uh, personal point of view on some 
people's agendas that are not to be brought into this because it is something of a sensitive nature, if you will. Very well. Thank you. Okay, we have another question from Lone Hawk. Yes. He would like to he would like me to ask about the reptilian he encountered, the name, origin, and why he was there. And thank you. And what was this person's name? Lone Hawk. Lone Hawk. One moment. I do not think he was someone from my reptilian race, but he was a Zeta, no, a Zeta reptilian, yes. And he was looking for some answers to some questions about who Lone Hawk was, because Lone Hawk has a negative, not a negative a big side, but there is something negative going on right now that this particular reptilian was interested in. And his name is Kutch. Interesting. Kutch is a very common name for the Zeta reptilians, but in this case, it, he's a very unusual character. So, does that answer his question? I hope so. Well, yeah, we have we have one more question here. Yes. And well, it's several questions, I guess. Is the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency of the United States, intricately involved with ISIS, if you know, ISIS, ISIL? Um, yeah. And the new Middle Eastern group near Syria and Iraq. If so, how? Yeah. Um, yes, they are involved. They have to be involved because they are part of the the way that this is going to be handled. Infiltration of the of the other ISIL, ISIS, whatever you want to call it, is the only way to get the proper information that they need to get rid of this terrorist group. However, this terrorist groups or group has spawned many to act on their own and then give them credit which is very very dangerous to understand what I'm talking about so therefore yes they are trying to find out how this is operating who the major people are which they already know but they need to infiltrate the group because that is the only way, from the inside, is the only way to stop it. They're, they're too spontaneous at times to be, uh, they're too spontaneous from the outside look to be stopped because no one knows what's happening. It has to come from the inside. Okay. He has another question. How many false flag events do you know of that the United States has perpetrated upon itself, and how do we stop these events? False flag events are done on purpose. The reason for these is because they want to get attention away from another area of the country or another area of the world. They do they do this to help themselves and to draw also the attention of the people that they know are doing these kinds of events and this will this is always important because as soon as they announce a false flag event a lot of communication happens all over the world and then they can find out where who's doing the communicating and what is happening. Many of the times this is just to, to get out information that's being hidden or find out where people are that they are looking for. Does that make sense to you? Yes, I'm sure it does. 
Okay, now we have Caroline or Carolina that would like to ask. Hey, yeah. Kenzo. Hello. Nice to meet How you. you? I've, never spoke, I've never spoken to you, so I just wanted to say hello and that I love you. I and, love you. Um, I, wanted, I wanted to thank you for coming to speak to us. Very well. Um, um, Grindel, I, I had a dream. I was wondering if you could help me figure out what it means. Tell um, me the dream. I, I, I was in a city and uh, suddenly my teeth started to fall out for some reason. And I was trying to put them back, but I, I couldn't do it. What does that mean? It means that there was something that took your uh, your bite away. That means that something is, when you were in this city, it took your bite away, which means that you couldn't affect it in any way, shape, or form. You were trying to accomplish something, and the city took away the the very energy that you had to do whatever it was that you needed to do. And so it was that you were trying to get your your po your point across, but there was no bite. It was gone. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds familiar. Okay. Yeah. Um I think that's all from me. I just wanted to say hello and I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Okay, Grindel, a day says to tell you she loves you. Ow, oh, thank you. <laughs> and Johannes has a little question here. He says yes. he would like to know if there's any message for his new big project or any messages for Martina, his girl. Just this. You have a lot to do. It's, the preparation is very important. Do not rush the project. Make sure that you have everything in order before you move to the next step. And Martina is a very big support and is a very big part of it in some ways. So make sure you're working together and your thought processes come together as one. I see success but it's not easy. Do not think that it will be easy. I know what you're doing and I I'd say many blessings to you. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. And now from Juggertron, he says, Hi Grindel, much love to you. Ah, thank you. Can you please provide information on the energy that buzzed me, visited me last night, shortly as I was going to sleep. It held me in a nice, lovely trance for 15 seconds or so. I don't think it was my astral body leaving, but I'm not sure. No, it wasn't your astral body leaving, right? I see that that was a visitation. The visitation was of an angelic sort. There was something that wanted to comfort you and calm you at that moment. And because you are, there was some upheaval, or I'm not sure if it was an upheaval, but there was some tension or some anger or something, and they just wanted to let you know that everything is all right. It was a visitation, but it was not your astral body leaving. They were just letting you know that all things are good right now. There might be something on your mind or something. I'm not sure what it is that they were trying to talk to you about, but it was definitely to comfort you. Oh, that's great news. Okay, this one's from Freddie Colt. <laughs> Colt. Yeah. What infusions can I get to improve my connection to my solar plexus chakra and to open it more? Thank you. Interesting. There are a couple different infusions that would help that. Lirin would be one of them. Lirin because uh, they are very uh, they are very grounded and they are very uh, they cause some bodily toning as well. But they're uh, it is a good place to start in Lirin and the Fendorian, Fendorian and Octorian both. 
deal with chakra colors and chakra movement. So the Fendorian especially brightens all the chakras and works with all the different chakras. So Fendorian would be the first choice. It also ignites the Kundalini, which is rather fun and also rather intense because it awakens all the body appetites and the body senses and feelings and emotions. So the Kundalini with the Fendorian is very, very good for opening and giving brightness to all the chakras. Octorian does work with the chakras as well, not quite as intensely. But I mentioned the Lyran first because their yellow chakra, which is the solar plexus chakra, is always bright. It's very, very rare that you find a Lyran that does not have a, a bright solar plexus chakra. So that was a thought that I had right away. All right. Well, that concludes the questioning that we have for you today, and um, we appreciate your time, Brenda. Would you like to give I, uh, bring someone Jim else? We bring Jim back in and give him a drink. Yeah, uh, we're okay. One minute, though. Thank you, Brenda. You're welcome. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah.